Cheryl Lemke, head of the EdTech research firm The Materi Group, recently completed a comprehensive review of existing studies on technology's impact on learning. Her findings were published in an important new meta-study called Technology in Schools, What the Research Says. eSchool News editor and publisher Greg Downey and associate editor Laura Devaney sat down with Ms. Lemke to discuss her findings. You know, if you boil it down, the, what we're really talking about is that technology does have a significant um, impact on learning, a significant positive impact. Mm -hmm. But most educators aren't satisfied with that. What they really want to know is, where are the spikes? You know, if I'm going to spend money in technology in schools and I have limited dollars, where should I put my investment? And one of the things that Cisco wanted to do was to take a broad look at this and say, where are those spikes? And I think that report does that. Mm -hmm. Where are the spikes? <laughs> <laughs> um, where are the spikes? <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I, um, you'd need to go back and look specifically about that. But in, mm -hmm. in general, we're, we're, we are seeing some, some significant places. For example, in the in the area of gaming and simulation, we're seeing some significant spikes when that is used uh, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, an example is in the area of dissection of frogs. Um, there was a, um, a study that was done that, that showed um, that if you actually used animation alone versus real dissection, you actually got better results in terms of test scores. Or um, the other one was animation and then um, live, or not live, but <laughs> dissection. Right. Uh, so, um, so that's one. Um, another one in the area of struggling readers, the fact that we can actually do some very significant work with them and there's a, there are a couple of products out there that if they're applied well, um, you can really get a bump in reading scores and that's big because if you can get kids on the right track with reading you know they will have a, a, a more, a more of a chance of success in, in school and in life. One of the, one of the things in your uh, report, at least as it was reported by us, uh, was that uh, uh, technology works successfully if it's implemented with fidelity. That was the term you, you, you applied. Mm -hmm. I would wonder if you could tell me what you meant by applied with fidelity. Well, let me give you an example. There's a, a piece of software that has great research on it for struggling and non-readers called Fast Forward. And um, the way that this, the, the company actually suggests that it, it be used is that it needs to be used for an intensive period of time. Um, it, for example, they prescribe um, six to eight weeks, 100 minutes a day. Um, many educators, when we talk to them, say, oh, Fast Forward doesn't work. And when we probe a little bit, they'll say back to us, well, we didn't really have the computers to use it for 100 minutes a day so instead we used it for 25 minutes for every other day for such and such and that's not the way it's prescribed it's not used with fidelity so it's it's not working. Um, the other thing that I think is very critical about this report is that we talk about the triangulation of technology, the cognitive learning, and high quality teaching. And I think without the combination of those, which, me which le really leads to systemic reform, you're not going to get the bump or the spike um, that, that I'm, I'm talking about. Um, John Bransford's book, um, How People Learn, talks a lot about the fact that um, you, we, we understand the difference between novices and experts and we understand that you have to have learning with understanding. It can't just be learning discrete pieces of information. Uh, we also understand that that all of our students come to us um, with misconceptions and preconceptions about the topics that we're trying to teach them. And so if we don't make visible um, the, those preconceptions, there may be some barriers to learning that we never address. And so our stu as a result, our students never learn. And the third one that he talks about is really about metacognition, the fact that we need to have, our, have an opportunity for kids to think about their own thinking, to reflect on their own thinking and what better way to do that than through technology products where they produce something and, and, and they get into the authentic learning um, that we know um, engages them and empowers them to learn. You mentioned the triangulation and and you know supporting teachers and do you think that people perhaps outside of the education field and outside of the ed tech field may not understand why it takes so long for technology to really reach its true effectiveness. Do you think that 
people might perceive it as a plug and go kind of thing and not and not realize how much professional development needs to go into it, how much tech support needs to go into it and, and things like that. There, there is a sense that it's easy to put technology into schools, and we know that there's there's no easy answer. There's no silver bullet. So, excuse me. There's um, no sil silver bullet, um, and business and industry really ought to know that. I mean, they introduced technology into the business world in the '60s, and it took them three decades before we saw a bump in productivity. And the reason for that is they just they did the same old, same old with the new technology, and it took them a while to really change the way that they were doing business and the same thing is true with education they need to give us a chance to really make that significant shift in the way that we do the business of education um, before we'll actually get that spike the other thing that I think is really critical is that we need to be careful about the metrics that we use in terms of what it, by what by which metrics we're judging success if we use those metrics um, that are 19th century that are really about um, the industrial model and don't use the metrics that are 21st century then we're allowing others to measure our success in a way that at the end of the day is not going to be very positive for our kids. That's it for this edition of Tech Watch. Join us next month for more EdTech news from around the nation. For eSchool News, I'm Dennis Pierce.